Hello again, and welcome to our first video for Section 7 of DMA 10, where we'll start our investigation into algebraic expressions. In this video, we'll cover some definitions um, for different terms in algebra, and then we'll talk about the language of algebra and keywords for different operations. In the next video, we're going to go through some practice problems and then some applications and word problems. Let's start with some definitions. A constant term is a quantity that always stays the same, so we usually represent that with a number. It could be something like, I don't know, 4 or 100 or a half. Okay, those are all considered constants because their values never change. A variable, however, is a quantity that can change, um, and it's usually represented with a letter. We might use um, X or Y or maybe a capital T or a lowercase t. There's a difference between those, between a capitalized letter and a lowercase letter. Or sometimes, uh, you probably won't see it in this class, but we use Greek letters like alpha and so on. Um, we will see pi later on in this, but pi is going to be a constant for us. An algebraic expression, okay, um, our variables or numbers uh, combined with operations. So here we have an example of an expression, 2x plus 3. What operations are going on here? Well, we've got um, an addition operation here, and 2x, uh, that's another form of implied multiplication. This is 2 times x, okay? So we have uh, constant terms here with the 3, and variables here with the 2x, okay? An equation is a mathematical sentence that contains an equal sign. Okay, so here we have uh, an example, 2x plus 3 equals 4. So this equal sign is what takes us from uh, an expression to an equation. So when you're doing your work, um, make sure to uh, recognize whether or not you're asked for an expression or an equation. The expression won't have an equal sign, but an equation will have an equal sign. Uh, here are some key words for addition problems that you can look for when you're doing your homework. Uh, you want to look for anything that implies an increase or numbers getting bigger, things going up, climbing, that sort of thing. Uh, so listed here in this table are some key phrases for addition, and uh, we'll write in the second side of the column um, what these will translate to as an algebraic expression. Okay, so the sum of a and 8. Sum is a keyword for addition. So that would translate to a plus 8. Okay. 4 plus c. Uh, plus is a word that we're familiar with. This would translate to 4 plus c. 6 added to m. Okay, so this word here, 2, is going to imply that the order of these two are going to get switched. We're going to start with m, and then we're going to add to that 16. So order is really important when we're translating things to um, an algebraic expression. Again, 6 more than t. Than, more than is a phrase that's going to imply an order change, too. So um, we'll start with t, and then it's 4 more than that. So we'll add 4 to it. Okay. 20 greater than, there's that word than again, f, means we start with f and then we add 20 to it, okay? t increase by r, so we start with a big T, and then we increase it, or add r to it, or exceeds y by 35. That means we start with y, and it exceeds, we go beyond that, by 35. Okay, so... Uh, Make sure to highlight these in your notes. These words to and than are words that are going to imply that the order is going to get switched with these addition problems. Here's our list of keywords for subtractions, um, but also look for anything that's going to imply a decrease. So numbers getting smaller, things going down, shrinking, things like that. Those are all going to be um, keywords for subtraction. So let's go ahead and uh, fill in this chart. The difference of 23 and P, difference is one of those words that's going to imply um, subtraction. So we start with 23, and then we subtract P from it. 
550 minus H. Minus is a word that we're familiar with. 550 minus H. Okay. 18 less than W, just like the last slide, that word than is going to imply that the order gets switched. So we have W, and then it's 18 less than that. So W minus 18. 7 decreased by J. So that's going to be a 7. And we're going to decrease it or subtract J. Okay. M reduced by X. So we start with M, and then we reduce it or subtract X. 12 subtracted from. From is another one of those words that are going to imply an order change. Um, L. So we start with L, and from that we subtract 12. And then 5 less F is 5 subtract F. Okay, so keep, it, uh, keep an eye out for those words like from and than, because that's also going to imply an order switch. Those are really important. Now let's look at some keywords for multiplication. Uh, in multiplication problems, we're going to look at anything that implies uh, repetition, or the same number or quantity repeated over and over and over again. So some of the key phrases for multiplication would be the product. The product of 4 times x. Now we could write that as 4 times x like this, but um, in algebra we're typically going to use implied multiplication to show that. So we would write that as just 4x like this. Okay. 20 times b would be 20 times b like this. Twice r. Twice implies times 2. So that would be 2r. Double the amount a. Again, double means times 2. Okay. So we would write that as 2a, double a. Triple the profit p. Triple means times 3. So that would be uh, 3 times p. We're always going to lead with the number. And 3 fourths of m. Um, now, 3 fourths um, is a fraction. We won't see that till later on in our DMA sequences, but I included it here for a reason. Whenever we're dealing with fractions or percents, the word of is going to imply multiplication. So we might write this as 3 fourths m. Lastly, we have our keywords for division. In division, we're looking um, for any, any situation where we're breaking something into different parts or th sorting things into um, different groups. So uh, the keywords would be quotient. Okay, so the quotient of uh, r and 19. We might write r divided by 19. But typically in algebra, we're going to write this as fractions, so we'd say r divided by 19. S divided by D would be S over D. K split into four equal parts. So K is our whole. That goes on top. And we're dividing it into four parts. So the parts go on the bottom. That's the number that's doing the dividing. And the ratio of C to D. Now, ratio is, again, a word that we'll see in later DMAs, but I included it here. Ratio also implies division. So the ratio of C to D would be C divided by So when we write algebraic equations, we need to look for keywords that are going to tell us when to use the equal sign or maybe an inequality sign. And those are listed here. Um, words like is, which is probably going to be the most common, but also words like are, gives, or yields are all going to imply an equal sign in our number sentences when we're writing equations. <laughs> words like is not, aren't, or does not equal um, are all going to imply the do not equal sign. Okay. And also remember to look out for your other inequality signs like less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or uh, even greater than or equal to. So to review, in this video we talked about some algebraic definitions and the language of algebra keywords for different operations, equality, and inequality. In the next video, we'll cover uh, some practice problems and then a couple of applications and word problems as well. Stay tuned.